Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your Dive Math 54 CDs. First, work the problems with me. Work every practice problem that I work and write down everything that I write down. Remember too that my practice problems, they aren't the same as the practice problems in that particular lesson that you're doing. They're similar, but they're not the same. So if you need some extra practice, do the ones in the book as well. Next, pause and rewind until you understand. This is one of the things that makes doing a lesson on a CD so much better than a live classroom is that you can rewind the teacher. You can just rewind and rewind until you understand a particular concept. So make sure and take advantage of that. Also, remember when you're working the practice problems, do a couple of them with me. Then if you think you understand how to do the next one, pause the CD, work it yourself, fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, go on to the next one. If you got it incorrect, rewind and see what you did wrong. You also need to make sure and do the facts practice, mental math, and problem solving section that's at the top of each lesson. Do one of those at least once per week. And those facts practice tests, you need to make at least a 90% or greater on those. Otherwise, you need to do them again. You should also time yourself on those facts practice tests and try to beat your previous time. Also remember to do all the problems in every problem set and also do all the tests that are in the test booklet and there are instructions in the test booklet as to when to take those tests. It's also important in Math 5.4 to show your work. You'll be doing lots of problems with multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction and you need to write down the steps and so you can see clearly how you're solving those problems. Don't use a calculator though. There's no need for a calculator at all in Math 5.4. So you can just leave your calculator alone and you can use that in a later course. And finally, have a good attitude. The best math program in the world won't make a bit of difference if you don't have a good, hard-working attitude. Be thankful that you have a nice computer with speakers and a cool CD lesson to work on and to learn from. Not everybody has that advantage that you have. God has given you a great opportunity here to have an excellent education and part of it is up to you as to your attitude and what you make of this opportunity. So work hard, do your best to learn these lessons and I know that God will bless you for that. Well let's go ahead and get started with your Math 54 book. Lesson 1 has two parts to it. The first part is a review of addition and then the second part is something called missing add-ins. Well, to review addition, let's just count some dots up. Let's say we had two red dots here and then three white dots over here. Okay, Altogether, we have five dots there. And there's a symbol that we use when we talk about addition. If we wanted to add the two red dots to the three white dots, we would put a plus sign. That symbol represents addition. Now if we wanted to use numbers to represent this, we'd call that a number sentence and we'd say 2 plus 3 and then we'd put a symbol called an equal sign and then the answer would be 5. And I usually like to put a box around my answers so that that will distinguish it from the rest of the problem. Now the two numbers that we added together, the 2 and the 3 there, we call those add-ins and then the result is called the sum. Okay, so anytime you see the word sum, they say, what is the sum of 2 and 3? You would know, oh, I'm supposed to do addition on that. 2 plus 3 is 5. That would be the sum of 2 and 3. Something else to remember, we could have added 3 plus 2. It doesn't matter which number we put first. It still equals 5, right? 2 plus 3 equals 5. 3 plus 2 equals 5. The order there does not matter. Well, let's do some practice problems. Remember, everything that I write on the board, you're supposed to write on the board too. So everything that you see on the board right now, you should have it written down. You don't have to write the page number down, of course, but everything else you should have written down. So let's add 7 and 6. So we would say 7 plus 6, and that would equal 13. Put a box around your answer. Now let's add 2 and 5. So we say 2 plus 5, that equals 7. Now if you need to, go ahead and 
make some dots if that'll help you with your addition. If it's been a while since you've done addition, you're getting confused. Just put two dots for two, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then count them up. And that would be addition, right? That would be seven dots, and that's your answer. I look at this problem. We have three numbers to add together. Three plus seven plus zero. Well, what I like to do on these kinds of problems is just add pairs of numbers together. So let's add three and seven first, and that would be equal ten. And then we need to add the zero onto that too. Well, ten plus zero is still ten because we're adding ten, think of dots, we're adding ten dots to zero dots, so it would still be ten. And so that's our answer. Now look at practice problem D. It says 2 plus n equals 7. And this is the second part of the lesson on missing add-ends. Remember, add-ends are the numbers that you add together. Now you just have to think to yourself, whenever you see a letter in there instead of a number, just think what. So think to yourself, 2 plus what equals 7. And we could use dots to help us. We could say 2 dots plus, and I'll just put what equals seven dots. Okay, well, we'd need five dots, right? Because two plus five equals seven, and so that would be our answer. And we can say n equals five. Let's do one more problem with missing add-ins. Three plus n equals six. So this time, let's try not to use dots. Let's just think to ourselves, 3 plus what equals 6? Well, that would be 3, right? Because 3 plus 3 equals 6. And you could do that. You could just substitute numbers in there. You could think, well, 3 plus 1 would be 4. 3 plus 2 would be 5. 3 plus 3 is 6. And so for our answer, we can say n equals 3. That's our missing number. Let's just do a couple more practice problems real quick. Sometimes you'll have problems that are described using words instead of numbers and addition signs. For example, this problem says, Carl saw five geese this morning. He saw 11 geese this afternoon. Why don't you write a number sentence? That means using numbers and plus signs. Write a number sentence that describes the total number of geese that Carl saw. Well, what you would do is just say 5 plus 11 equals 16. And you could put geese at the end if you wanted to. So that's a number sentence that describes the total number of geese that Carl saw. Let's do one more. Look at this one. Write a number sentence that describes the total of those two dice. Pretend like you were playing a game that you had to roll dice with and you rolled this number, a 7. So a number sentence to describe that would just be 4 plus 3 equals 7. That's what a number sentence is. It has the plus signs and the equal signs. And then the numbers that are necessary to describe the problem correctly. Most of the problems in this book you'll be given a number sentence to start with. But sometimes in these problems, you have to make a number sentence based on what the words or the pictures describe. Okay, well that's all for lesson one.